Howdy folks. So a while back uh, I had some people asking about uh, Seasonic power supplies and uh, I think I mentioned that uh, at some point in the future I would tear one apart uh, if I had one just to sort of show you the kind of build quality uh, from this company which I consider to be uh, pretty much the best power supply manufacturer on the market. And uh, it's been a long time since I bought a power supply and anyway uh, I bought this very strange power supply uh, for, a, for an embedded system and it's going into service tomorrow. So I thought in the brief period of time that I actually have it, um, I might as well tear it apart and I might as well put the camera on while I'm doing this. Now, of course, this is not your standard ATX power supply by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it's only about six and a half centimeters tall. Uh, it's very, very strange form factor. And uh, I'm, I'm, I bought this exclusively because of that form factor. Um, the application that I'm putting this in will not fit a proper ATX supply, but it is by Seasonic, Seasonic nonetheless. So the layout of this is going to be very different from their ATX supplies, but uh, I think the build quality will be um, better than this, uh, at least, because this is, as far as I know, the least expensive power supply the entire company makes. Um, so this is pretty much the cheapest thing you can buy from this company. And you'll see that the quality is not bad. So, um, you know, if you spend more money from this company, you'll get something that is... Uh, you know, at least this or better. So uh, this is the uh, model SS-300TGW. Uh, this is an 80 plus gold 300 watt power supply. Um, it's, uh, it's actually quite nice because uh, up to 150 watts the fan does not spin under like normal ambient temperature. So in the application I have it, it will, the fan will actually never come on, which is uh, really nice. Um, I've taken the screws out to make this a little bit faster. Uh, but on the end here, it's just universal input, uh, 115 to uh, 230 volts. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing exciting like that. And uh, just for those wondering, it's just got a standard 20 plus 4 pin. It has three uh, SATA power connectors, uh, a floppy connector, a single Molex connector, and, uh, and uh, a standard uh, P4 CPU supplementary power connector. It has uh, no PCIe uh, 6 or 8 pin connectors, but uh, you can always get adapters for that if you really wanted to, although I don't need them in my application. So anyway, uh, lifting the lid on this thing, and this thing is very easy to take apart, by the way. It's very, very serviceable if you were to service such a thing. And uh, on the top here, uh, we have a, a Gemicon brand ball bearing fan, uh, which of course, uh, it's, it's very quiet, but it only comes on for about a second after power up and then it stops spinning. So uh, I, I can't really say anything about this fan simply because it, it's just never on. It's connectorized, which is really nice. You don't see that very often. Um, I just I just like the assembly of, of, of their products. It's very nice. So looking in the top here, I took this side panel off um, to get better access to under here because this is actually two boards that have been soldered one on top of each other. So um, you, the only way to see the bottom one without unsoldering it is to actually uh, look at from the from the end. But anyway, just getting you in a little bit closer here. So, like I said, mains in input comes in on this side, and there's a little board here, which uh, is just for the uh, it's just the mains input board. And the first thing that I noticed is there's actually a copper sheet on this side, and it's sandwiched between not one but two pieces of uh, of clear plastic. So one on the outside, and then one on the inside, and it's just plastic, uh, sort of like almost like pop tabbed together. And uh, this uh, copper sheet is actually electrically connected to the ground pin. So this is obviously uh, some, form of, some form of shielding from the input for either noise coming out or noise, noise coming in. I don't entirely know. Uh, maybe, maybe both. I, I don't entirely know what their uh, design decision with that was. But it's interesting to see a sheet of copper like that. Uh, I would have expected it maybe to be uh, like another metal or something. But uh, it's, it's most certainly for uh, EMI. Um, uh, mo most definitely. We've got uh, mains filter cap, we've got uh, some chokes for filtering, um, those could be mobs, they're probably caps, uh, across the line caps, and then we've just got two stranded wires with obviously um, obviously a ferrite bead in there which go down to the main board. And the main board in this uh, power supply, everything in this power supply is just really crammed together to get it all in this tiny little space. It really is a lot smaller in person than it looks on camera. Um, but anyway, we've got uh, we've got some chokes down here. Uh, there's a big one underneath this uh, that's been heat shrinked here. Uh, this heat sink is actually for a full wave bridge rectifier right here. So it's 
It's nice to see that they've heat synced the rectifier. That's something that uh, you usually don't see. In fact, I don't see heat sinks on rectifiers until the power supplies usually exceed five or 600 watts. So to see that on such a low power supply is, uh, is nice to see because uh, most people just don't care about those things, but they do, they do dissipate quite a bit of heat. Um, we've got our main tank capacitor here. I cannot uh, unfortunately say who makes this because the labeling is underneath this uh, hard silicone here. Uh, it's 420 volt rated, 180 microfarad, but I don't know who makes it. Um, I mean, I'm glad that they've, they've chosen to use uh, the silicone here. Uh, it keeps all the coils in place. Of course, magnetostriction is going to cause them to vibrate, uh, and you don't want them to make whining noises, so um, uh, gluing them down helps reduce that. But also, of course, if this thing experiences shock or vibration, uh, it'll prevent them from uh, breaking off the board because of their sheer mass. Of course, these are very large components. Uh, we've got, uh, obviously, two, two TO220 devices, which are on an insulated heat sink here, not a very large one. Uh, same thing over here. We've got two TO220 devices on this heatsink here, and they are also they are also insulated. So I, I don't entirely know. I'm assuming that uh, probably this is probably the the input uh, switcher, and then this is probably the rectifier on the output. But it could be the other way around. I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I, have, I haven't I haven't uh, actually ohmed this out and tried to reverse engineer it because uh, I frankly I don't care. We have uh, this right here, which interestingly enough actually has the Seasonic logo on the side of it. Um, and this looks like an inductor to me. Um, we've got our main main uh, switching transformer here, which is actually quite large. Um, the, the iron core on this is very, very large for a 300 watt supply as well. Um, we have another smaller transformer here, which most certainly is for the standby supply. So this is for the five volt standby, and then uh, this switch is on uh, when you actually activate the uh, the green uh, green. Uh, I can't see that. Yeah, the, when you pull the green wire to ground, um, that would activate this supply. But this thing runs all the time, uh, just to supply uh, some standby current. So um, they're almost always separated to meet the energy star uh, energy star requirements now. Um, on this side, we've got a little board. Um, it's a vertical riser board that's been soldered in at 90 degrees. Uh, there's quite a few pins on both ends, and there's a little gap in the center without any. And that, of course, is our controller. Uh, I can see one, two, I can see three ICs, all surface mount, of course, on that board. Um, so you're going to have your switching controller is going to be on there. You're going to have your overcurrent, over voltage protection um, chip on there. Um, the other one may be some sort of feedback or something like that. I'm not entirely sure uh, what the what the third one might be. It might be just uh, something like seven four series logic. You really don't know. Um, the there are a couple electro electrolytics here, and there's a couple under here. Uh, again, they've also been gunked down. Uh, these are by um, they're by Nippon Chemicon, which is uh, widely regarded as uh, one of, if not the best, capacitor manufacturer in the world. So um, good to see that. Um, these, the, uh, of course, those are the uh, the brown ones. The black ones are made by Rubicon, which again, uh, they're definitely up in the top five uh, capacitor manufacturers. So um, all decent quality capacitors. I really wish I could find out who made this one, but I would assume it's probably from a reputable manufacturer just from looking at the rest of uh, what's on this board. And of course, once it goes through the transformer and uh, it gets rectified, uh, we have to do the smoothing for the rails, which of course we're going to have the 12 volt, the 3.3 volt, and the 5 volt rail. Uh, technically there's also a negative 12 volt rail as well, but uh, no one really cares about that. And uh, the easiest way to see it is uh, kind of down on the end here, and I may have to zoom out because uh, it's a little bit close, but anyway, the way they've done this is they've actually done this uh, with two boards and then they've just screwed the two together. And I took the screws out thinking I could get this top board off, but no, there's actually a stake, there's actually a, what looks like a ground stake which runs through it and they've soldered that on. So I'd have to desolder this top board to get it off and I couldn't be bothered to do that. But one of the first things that I noticed, even actually before I took it apart, because I could actually see it through the uh, through the fan grill, which I thought was very odd, um, or there are polymer, what look like polymer capacitors in here. Um, they could be wrong, they could just be surface mount electrolytics, but they look like polymer capacitors, which would be very strange. You don't see that very often um, in, uh, in, in uh, power supplies. 
But uh, again, on the bottom, we have much, uh, much more capacitance on the bottom than the top. The top more has uh, the coils on it. Again, uh, Rubicon caps, um, Nippon Chemicon caps. Um, all of the outputs are uh, they're basically they're soldered to a metal stud, which goes through the bore, and then they've heat shrunk all of the cables together. Uh, and they've done that on both the top and the bottom. And they've got a little uh, connector, which goes over to the, uh, the control board here. Uh, everything is, uh, I mean, it's neatly, it's neatly laid out. Uh, it's all logical. Everything looks okay. Interestingly enough, uh, these three tabs here, uh, originally you'd think they're, they're heat sinks, but actually there's nothing actually connected to them. These two actually have screw holes, but there's nothing actually connected to them, but they go into the bore just like this. So I think what they're doing is they're getting the heat. Uh, there's one of two things these are, these are used for. Either the first one is they're getting rid of heat, uh, from the board, so there's sort of components that are actually sinking heat into the ground plane of the board, and then they're using this to provide a little bit of extra surface area to get that heat out of the board, or they're using this as uh, EMI shielding between uh, the transformer and the output, and that's probably more likely what they're doing, um, because they're most certainly connected to the ground plane, so they're just acting as a shielding, sort of as to what this was doing over here, but in a more economical sense, but it may also be have to do with uh, with heat dissipation as well, because of course the fan is right here and the fan blows down, so they may be serving a dual purpose, but uh, uh, without uh, really doing a lot of analysis, there's no way I can easily easily tell. Um, so this is a great power supply, um, however, it isn't perfect. Uh, I've noticed quite a few things that I, I don't particularly like on the manufacturing side more than anything. Um, for example, this cap here is a little bit askew. Uh, this leg here is a little bit uh, little bit off, it's not all the way through the board. Uh, it's still making connection, it still will work fine, I just don't like that. Uh, these wires here don't have any strain relief on this side, and they're stranded, and uh, they're a little bit more flexible than I would normally expect, so it's possible that they've actually broken some strands when they cut the wire, and uh, I'm not particularly happy about that. Uh, they only have to carry about two and a half amps, uh, which is not that much, so even if they broke a few strands it wouldn't be that bad, but um, I'm not, that's the thing I'd probably be the most concerned about, uh, but I'm not going to do anything about it, so I'm, I'm not that concerned, uh, but it is just something to note. Uh, another thing I noticed was that stake that I was talking about that connects these two output boards together. If you actually look at it on the top here, it's right in between these two caps. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there's actually no solder on this side of the board. There's a big blob on the underside of the board. Uh, which I'll probably won't be able to, to show you, but obviously the solder did not wick all the way through the hole to this side, so that's not the best solder joint that uh, it, it could have. And uh, other things like this little uh, this little transformer package is uh, kind of on an angle there, and just 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 things like that to just show it's it's sort of hastily manufactured. Um, but the thing is, I've seen this in far far worse in other supplies. Um, I mean, I remember back when uh, OCZ or OCZ uh, technologies before they before they got bought by Toshiba, they, they made power supplies. Well, they didn't make power supplies, they sold power supplies under their brand name. And they were made by another company, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but they had absolutely the worst quality control I think I've ever seen. And their supplies had, I, I wanna say easily like a 40% DOA rate, just from horrible manufacturing. And it's just it's it's just appalling that this stuff uh, gets produced. Um, so you know to see this, even though a lot of you may may see this and go, oh that looks that looks bad. Really, in the grand scheme of things, this is actually very good. Uh, power supplies. Everyone expects to go out and buy like a forty dollar power supply, and it's just it's ridiculous because you can't you just can't get quality for that. This, by the way, is seventy Canadian dollars from my local retailer. So you could probably get it for cheaper elsewhere, but 70 Canadian is what this seems to retail for. So, you know, I, I all of my all of my supplies are usually at least 100 and 150 dollars, at least double this. Um, so, uh, you know, I would expect to see uh, different different construction in those, but uh, I would expect to see the same or better quality. I don't see any reason why the quality would go down if you spend more money. That doesn't make any sense. So. Um, this hopefully this just gives you a little bit of an overview of what what to sort of expect in uh, in Seasonics products. Like I said, I I only trust this company. I've had some bad experiences with other other manufacturers, and uh, particularly companies that do contracting like Cooler Master, OCZ, um, Sparkle Power, um, 
thing, uh, even even companies like Antec, uh, things like that. Uh, they they're they're not they're not the worst, but they're they're definitely far from the best. Just even things just like the just like the brands of caps. Um, even even if the power supply design is sort of sound, uh, if you put crappy components in it, it's still going to last a very short period of time. The layout of this is very constrained, and they seem to have done a pretty decent job with um, keeping the caps away from heat. So of course, all the caps on this side, there's really no heat producing components over here. Um, the only caps that are really close to anything hot at all uh, are these little ones down here, which are close to this heatsink, and these ones down here, which are sort of in the area of this heatsink. But they're actually those are actually pretty far away. So really, the only cap that's anywhere close to any heatsink or is really this one and this one, and uh, that's very good. I've seen designs where they literally put the main filter caps for the DC output right next to a massive heatsink, and of course, it, you you can't expect that thing to last at all because the cap's just going to get cooked under normal operation. So um, layout and things like that are important. Component selection is important. Just just everything like that is important. So even the choice of fan uh, is important. Like I had a Cooler Master, um, a different one than the one I had the really bad experience with. Uh, and you know, Cooler Master is a company, they make cooling products, they make fans. And the thing that died in it was the fan. Uh, just, it's, it's kind of sad. So anyway, uh, I don't want to ramble on too long. Anyway, that's, uh, that's all I really got to say about this. It's a decent supply. It's not perfect, but it's better than what I've seen out there. And uh, this particular model, at least, uh, I, would, I would put this definitely in, uh, in a lot of uh, low power machines. And since everything nowadays from Intel is very low power, this works really well. Um, the machine this is powering, by the way, is a, an, an, it's an, it's a mini ITX board with uh, an Intel Pentium on it. Uh, for, for an embedded system and the, uh, the, the housing has to go in is uh, very thin and that's why this supply has to fit. And I didn't want to put in a server supply because those things usually have those little tiny fans and they're loud as hell. Whereas with this thing, it has no fan, so it's uh, much quieter. Anyway, uh, hopefully that was uh, informative and uh, thanks for watching.